One of the most important prescriptions for your health is not a medication. Now that's pretty ironic for me to say because as a family doctor, I've written hundreds of thousands of prescriptions for medications. And medications do have their place. But for many, if not most people, they are not the most important prescription for health. Research suggests that 40% of premature death and 80% of chronic disease can be attributed to unhealthy lifestyle choices. But not infrequently, I hear from my patients, hey doc, I want to live a healthier lifestyle and I know what to do, but I just don't do it. What can help us not only know what to do, but actually live a healthier lifestyle? Now, this is just not theoretical to me. It's very real. I have patients that I care for and care about suffer the severe and life-threatening consequences of unhealthy lifestyle choices. These consequences include heart disease, strokes, dementia. These and many other conditions are not only devastating to my patients, but also their entire families, who often must become caregivers. Now, in addition to all this suffering, if we could reduce just a, if we could just decrease these medical problems by a fraction, we would help reduce the over $4 trillion the U.S. spends on health care every year. Now, traditional medical education does an excellent job teaching physicians about medications and medical procedures. However, there's very little training comparatively on how to promote a healthy lifestyle. The field of lifestyle medicine was created partly to fill in this educational gap, and according to the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, there's six pillars for healthy lifestyle. They include healthy nutrition, physical activity, stress reduction and emotional well-being, social connection, getting adequate sleep, and avoiding risky substance use. Now, why do we struggle so much to implement these pillars? Maybe it's because it just feels like too much effort and too much to take on all at once. However, there's a single underlying practice that can make all six pillars more approachable, less stressful, and even enjoyable. That practice is mindfulness. Contrary to what you may have heard, mindfulness is not just about sitting around and meditating, and it's not only good for dealing with stress. Mindfulness can create a foundation, an important foundation, and an inroad for all six pillars of a healthy lifestyle. So what is mindfulness? One definition is simply paying full attention to what's happening right here and right now. In practical terms, it means that when your mind drifts to distraction, to thoughts of the past and future, we simply gently, patiently refocus our attention to what's happening now, including our present moment sensations, and we do so with an attitude of curiosity and acceptance. Now, don't expect to stay completely focused for five minutes or even two minutes straight. That's impossible for most people. You are building the skill of patiently and gently refocusing your attention, so every distraction is just one more opportunity to practice. Applied correctly, mindfulness can strengthen all six pillars of a healthy lifestyle and move someone from I know what to do and I'm just not doing it, to actually living a healthier lifestyle while enjoying doing so. 
As an example of mindfulness in action, let's first discuss the pillar of healthy nutrition. Now, I've had patients who have dramatically reduced their cholesterol, their blood sugar, their weight, all without medication. And one of the ways they've done so is by eating more mindfully. So how does one apply mindfulness to healthy nutrition? Well, luckily, I brought a snack. <laughs> so let's see how many senses I can involve in mindfully eating this snack. Let's start with a sense of sight. And we can appreciate this banana like we appreciate artwork. Isn't it really nice? We can look at the colors and the shape. Next, how about aroma? And I can just smell the banana. Wow, it's actually quite wonderful. It's a fantastic part of eating that we often ignore. Texture. Hmm. I can feel it inside my mouth. It's actually kind of like it's giving my mouth a massage. And taste. Taste is so much richer and more vibrant when we eat mindfully. We can appreciate subtle flavors, and sometimes there's intense explosions of flavor. How about sound? Let's use the cracker, and we can see how we can appreciate sound <laughs> like we can appreciate music. Lastly, how about the sense of hunger? Now, hunger is really important because it tells us not only when to eat, but when to stop eating so we don't overeat. That's all there is to mindfully eating and drinking, making that effort to bring full attention and curiosity to the process itself. Eating in that way is far more enjoyable and satisfying and because we realize that the enjoyment of eating is not just about what we eat, but also how we eat, we're much more likely to pick out healthier foods when we eat mindfully. And let's say once in a while you want a special treat, don't eat a whole bag of candy in front of the TV. Instead, take out one small piece and spend several minutes savoring it. In a similar way, mindfulness can be applied to all the other pillars of lifestyle medicine. Physical activity, much more enjoyable when you focus on the here and now. For instance, if you go on a hike, you could feel the sun and the breeze on your skin. You might smell pine in the air, and you could feel your feet on the ground. Maybe even hear some birds singing. If you're having trouble sleeping, don't try real hard to get sleep. <laughs> That's going to be counterproductive. Instead, think of it as a perfect time to practice mindfulness. Feel the sensation of this one in-breath. And this one out-breath. And when your mind drifts, gently refocus your attention to one breath at a time and you're far more likely to fall asleep. In a similar way, mindfulness can be applied to stress reduction. John Kabat-Zinn said something to the effect of, practice mindfulness like your life depends on it. Because it does. Right now, start along with me. Focus on the sensation of this one in-breath. And this one out breath. Relax the muscles around your eyes. Allow the corners of your mouth to rise into a smile. What can you feel right now? Can you be curious? Can you be accepting? Consistently and patiently practice mindfulness 
in each area of your life and you will markedly improve your well-being. Thank you very much for your attention.